The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. Players' Lounge offseason, let's ride. Danny Let's go. Heck my Harrison, Barry Church, yes, sir. Barry Scruggs, brought to you by Tostitos. Gentlemen, 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 always a lot to talk about here. Yeah. Uh, all, all season doesn't end, baby. League year's about to come around here. Mm-hmm. Salary cap's going to have to get in place here, so contracts got to be redone, renewed. We'll start off with with, with uh, my guy. Tell my Sam Sam. 77. Sham Sham. Tyree Smith. Reports coming out saying, hey, Cowboys, Tyree Smith. Didn't uh, weren't able to come together on a contract. He's going to be a restrict, uh, unrestricted free agent, and that uh, this is mm. most likely going to be it. Tyron was second team All Pro. His agent, as any agent should, hey, my guy, second team All Pro. That contract last year, where I played game to game. That doesn't work for us. That's what your agent should do. Yep. Cowboys didn't come up with a deal at all, and I I, I just want to make sure I put it out here first. I want to thank Tyron. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's a fantastic course. career. Time. Fantastic yeah. career. Coming out of USC, take a ninth overall, started right tackle, went to left tackle, fantastic year. Uh, fantastic career, and last year, fantastic year. Yeah. Thought he'd have a good year. You had a good year. But thank you, and you got to move on. You got a left tackle now. Tyler Smith moves over to the left tackle. <clears throat> you drafted him to be a left tackle. I talked to Will McClay last year. He said, that's what we did. We drafted him to be a left tackle. So, moves on over there. And, of course, you know, you want to go to left tackle because that's where the money is. Mm-hmm. Where so the money, money resides. So money not a left guard. So, you <laughs> kick him on out there. Uh, yeah. Whoever signs, signs Tyron, uh, good luck to him. You go in the draft and you go find someone else. So, I just said my piece on 77. Hey, look, listen, if if it is the end, because, you know, a lot of stranger things have happened. True. Sure. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So, if it is the end. Tyron has had a hell of a career here. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's over. I mean, I think the recipe has been put out there. Uh, like, hey, this is what you got to do to make sure that this guy is able to play at the top-notch level and that he's healthy. Um, limit the practices. Make sure that you keep him out of harm's way and let him be healthy for the game, and he's going to go out there and be one of the best left tackles in the game. So I think he still has 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 some left in the tank. But like I said, if it's the last, last, last hoorah for him here last season, uh, Hall of Fame career here, uh, game changing left tackle mm-hmm. for over a decade. So shout out to him. But you know what? This is gonna sound crazy. I still, uh, you know, what? I, I would have took him back. <laughs> I oh, told you, oh, I yeah. said that oh, last yeah. week. Yeah. I would have took money aside. I'm just talking about. They, 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 I know. I said money aside. Him as a player, and now after all those years, then finally figuring out how to get it done. I would have said, hey, man, we did we did finally figure out the magic sauce, okay? Mm-hmm. So now we're going to make sure that we use that sauce and we got us a second-team all-pro left tackle for the next however many years he felt like he wants to play. Is it, <clears throat> are you telling the truth when you say Tyron Smith has been an all-time, like, top 10 left tackle in this league? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and all of the, the accolades, everything that he's accomplished in the league, obviously you know it, but I look at a guy um, – Played for the Rams and played for also played for the Cincinnati Bengals before number seventy seven. Big wit, big wit, right? Unless you got yeah. So played a long time in the league and then finally goes to another team. We ends up winning them a ring, and, and I'm sure for for Tyron, that's what that's what all of these that's what everybody covets. You know, winning a Super Bowl, it, it, Hall of Fame's gonna be fine, but winning a Super Bowl and. Maybe he's he feels like I'm in that position now to be able to look at the full gamut of all the teams that are out there and pick and choose where I want to go. I'm with you, Nui, when you say, look, you've had a fine career, but we've drafted the guy to be the heir apparent, and we understand from watching him play that he's that guy, and he can make that move. I think for the Cowboys, they have to move on in this mm-hmm. situation. There are some guys that's getting long in the tooth on the offensive line. I loathe the day when we have to have this conversation about Zach Martin because, again, you're talking about one of the best – to, to do it yeah. in the league, but it, it's time. It's time, and it, it was almost it also going back to Jason Witten when Jason Witten was playing those final years and not allowing to, for guys to develop in front of him. Mm-hmm. That's another situation, and I think you look at Tyler and the success that he's had playing guard. Can can he make the adjustment out to left tackle? Is 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 what I'm sure this organization wants to see, and I trust 
without having the time, proof, and consistency mm -hmm. that he can do it. No, this this is uh, this is surprising to me. You know, first off, echo everything you guys said about his Hall of Fame career because we all know he was a, one of the greatest left tackles to ever do it in the game. Um, but this is surprising for me because you know when was the last time we saw you know this Dallas Cowboys organization let an all-time great you know go away? or just kind of walk away from their organization. I mean, you go from the Jason Wittens, uh, you know, Romo was here for forever. I mean, you're looking at guys that have been here and their mainstay was with the Dallas Cowboys, and we see them, like you said, you know, kind of be that blocker, and the Cowboys keep bringing them back. So to me, this is surprising, and maybe it's, you know, going in a different direction for the Cowboys as an organization to say, hey, we got to, you know, we got to keep this thing turning. We got to keep it rolling. So I'm surprised when it comes to that regard that they let him slide. Um, but when it comes to Tyron Smith on a new team, I don't know if he's going to be able to do that that <laughs> recipe. Like, I don't know if he's going to be able to say, hey, man, I'm just no camp for me. You know, I'm just going to practice, you know, maybe on Fridays, on half days, because you got to learn that system, that whole new system, how they like to block the power, how they like to pass protect. You know, what, what is their communication out there with the center? How is he pointing? things out so I don't know if he's going to be able to do that recipe and um but we'll see going forward because we know if he doesn't practice during the week but plays in the game the guys are all-star the guys are second team all pro so we'll see what, what what happens with him going forward but like you guys all said I mean he had a hall of fame career here and it's much deserved so so my, my thing is also this okay because I, I know last week we talked about I watched the Rams and them put all the players in the right position and give up draft picks and do all this mm -hmm. stuff and and that's what I don't know we'll get to all in but this is just that little, sounds like all in that, to no, me that's sound like all in. <laughs> so to me, what all in sounds like is you have a hell of a player left guard. You have a hell of a player left tackle. <laughs> and you're just looking for the other pieces to be able to fill in. Yeah. So this could be your all in season. And then now you got to go find you somebody on that left side when you already got the left side shored up. Uh, and you, you had some other pieces that you could have, you know, been focused on. But, you know, it's just it is what it is. So where are you going to put them coins at? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, what, I don't know what number he was asking for, whatever he wanted at left tackle, but you know, where are you going to allocate those dollars to? Do you think it's more important to, you know, take that money and give it to, you know, a running back out there? Like, do you think it's going to be that much more impactful? Oh, you think that's the case with, with four, which it could be. It could be with four out there, and he, we all know the quarterback position is the most important position on the football field, but if you ain't got nobody holding down that blind side, you know, how matter. how much yeah. of an impact can four have out there? So it's going to be interesting where they where they decide to put these dollars. What, what's more interesting to me is from the center and guard position. If you're moving Tyler Smith out to tackle, what are you going to do with Biotish? Do you sign him to a new contract? Do you let him walk, or do you go into because then if you go into the draft for the center and the guard position, then you're you're not fortifying, you're weakening your offensive line now with rookies that have no experience. So free agency, then you're looking to bring in an offensive lineman if you don't sign Biotish. And so, look, it, we're, we're starting the musical chairs early, and I appreciate that yeah, rather true. than doing it during the season. That's true. But I, I think something, something had to change. Something had to change. And, you know, being, a, to me, in a perfect world, re-signing Biotish and then going out and getting a guard would be the move. Uh, if I had a rookie guard there, I would feel better about that having him in between Biotish and Smith versus. Did you, you like know, Idoga? Rookies. You like Idoga out there? I like. And the thing about Idoga, Idoga was a guard and not a tackle, and we made mm -hmm. him play tackle. Yeah. So that's like that's the mystery to all of that because he was playing out of position early in the mm -hmm. season. He did a good job. He did. I did. I feel like he, he did, did a good yeah. job. And so, yeah, like I understand the organization is basically saying, "Look, Tyron, it's long in the tooth, man. We need to try and move on down the, down the road and find something better here." I think Tyler Smith is the heir apparent. They get an opportunity to look at that now. Start doing it your way where you're talking about going all in, finding those other pieces. I think the, the hesitancy that I have on that is we know that anything can happen. And if anything does happen, then we're back to square one. Yeah. My, 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 and then my question is this. If he goes out, he tests the market, and he, hey, state taxes may be a little different. That's the true. number's not what he, yeah. what he had hoped it would be. Oh, this is home. He's been there for a long time. Then I believe – like, do you think that Jerry says, all right, wait, well, come on back, big fella, and then we'll we'll hold it off mm -hmm. for one more year, and Tyler, you go ahead and stay in that left, left guard, and mm -hmm. we got our we got our guy at the right price, over the, a price that we think is fair, and then you move on, move on from that point, or do you think it's just, hey, man, hey, thank you for your services. <laughs> uh, you've been great here. You've been in the ring of honor, but – we gonna move on with with uh, Tyler Smith as our left tackle. Man, I think this. I think that there will still be a market for Tyron Smith. I think there's a team out there. I think there's a team out there. That, no, I think they'll want him. I yeah, mean, I mean, from him. what we heard, I mean, I, I, like we said, we don't know the number that he's asking, yeah. but it seems like it may be high. 
<laughs> so it could be a market. Yeah, I, <laughs> so it could be a market out there. Your second, but I mean, <laughs> your second team. All I know. Pro. So. Yeah, yeah. You got to get so, them so it's right out of the game. You're you second get them team yeah, so. all pro in a league that is starving for offensive linemen, and you go to to, to the new team. Hey. How did I play as many games as I did? I don't pla- I don't practice during the week. They get me ready to go. Are you good with that? This mm-hmm. is the way we can mm-hmm. get the most out of the player. I just looked up free, uh, franchise tags. Uh, offensive lineman, $20 million. Mm. Okay, 20.9. Mm. Might as well call it 20. So if, if I'm the agent, okay, we're, we're looking to get here. Mm. If you're the Cowboys, are you looking to get there? No. You know what? I do have a what's – the, what's the minimum at, at his – at the like years the he's been in there. Like veteran. Oh, no, no, oh, no. Vet, no. Vet, like, vet minimal. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be. Crazy. What, five, six? Got to be. So you so when you're looking at the number, you at least, you're at least on vet minimum, which you're not going to pay the guy. No, no, no. He's yeah. paying whatever that is. And then, so it's the difference between that 20 and then whatever the minimum is, which you know you're not going to be able to pay him. So I think, I think when you look at the market and say, well, how much are you willing to pay a, a left tackle that much? I think he's, Worth that much? I think the injury thing, just because he played one full season, is still going to be something where a team says, "You know what? I can't. I can't give you a two year." What Mike Evans has yeah. got fifty two. Yeah, <laughs> and I get yeah. two year fifty two million dollars. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Oh That's my God. The whole, the oh whole premise God. too of of you basically playing per game. Hey, yeah. you, yeah. you healthy? You right. I, if I'm tired, that's a no start. No, no. I know. I know. We're not doing yeah, so. Doing so those again. things. Hey, man, you got that last year. That was a freebie. We're not doing that anymore. Hmm. And I get it on Tyron's part, but I also get the Cowboys part. And Danny, you went through that negotiations class it, it, when you were working mm-hmm. on the NBA, and you get to that point. What is the bottom line where you say this is the floor? If I'm Tyron. I have to have guarantees. I'm not playing game to game. I nah. need guaranteed money. I finished second team all pro. While I may not need 21, I need something up here that compensates me for what I do and what I have done. And if you're the Cowboys, <laughs> as you're trying to pay Dak Prescott, as you're trying to pay CeeDee Lane, as you know, Micah yeah. Parsons is coming up over here. Um, everybody can't get paid. That's facts. You got also Diggy Zoo at some Deron point. Deron Bland coming. He's got to get paid. Yeah. Deron Bland. So... As much as I like Tyron Smith, and you know I love some 7-7, seven, seven, this thing starts to become financial. Mm-hmm. And as I'm looking at the finances, and he's probably going to be able to get a two-year deal from somebody. You oh, may yeah. just want to do a one. That's why I, I am of the opinion, I'll let, I'll let him go. <laughs> I'll put Tyler Smith there. Now, when you talk about the center, I'm going out to go try to draft. I want a bigger center. Okay, That's what yeah. I would want. Yeah. I, I, I want a bigger center. We saw Biotis come in here and play as a rookie. We saw Travis Frederick come in here and play as a rookie. That's true. You, you can do that. Uh, the, the kid Humphrey up there at uh, uh, Kansas City, I think it was, went to Kansas State. But that, that kid, he, he, you've seen rookies do this. Uh, the guy in Baltimore, um, his name was talked about a few years yeah. ago, and the Cowboys didn't get him all pro. Yeah. So you can find somebody to do this. Plus, you've got a Zach Martin on one side to help a young player out. If it's Odogo over there. You're not gonna have five perfect dudes, but you're if you run out Tyler Smith, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele, those are three really good ones when no, you start absolutely. looking across the league. We can go ahead and plug some holes. It's not gonna be perfect, but you cannot go in, in my opinion, not improving the run game. You were fifteenth yeah. in rushing last year. Yeah, that ain't good enough. Did, was anybody happy with Tony Pollard's production and the running back production last no. year? Nah, no, nah, sir. Nah, no, nah, nah, hang on. no, not at all. Hey, but the names that you – when you say Travis Frederick, all right, let's 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 take his name and put him up all right, somewhere else, all okay. right, because you're talking about another guy that comes in and is a, a, a great at all his pro, position, yeah. right? And, and I think sometimes we get it confused when we start mixing those names up or thinking that a guy is, is the equivalent of another guy. I never said Biotish was that. And, and my out of necessity, if we have to bring in – have a, a Biotish, I'm almost like, for who, for what? Especially if we have a guy that we already know what he is, what his strengths, what his weaknesses are, and what essentially is he asking for. Now, it's been an embarrassment of riches here for years where we've had five across the board. Mm-hmm. Right, no other team in the NFL has that. The Super Bowl champion didn't even have that. So, look, if we're, we're talking about the good guys that we have, I'm okay with that. I'm just talking about where we have the weaknesses in our offensive line. I just don't feel like – smack dab in the middle is where you want to go with two rookies right there. That's all. So I I, I did some research on West Virginia's uh, Zach Frazier. Yeah. So called the contact up there. When we played in the Big 12, I said, 
what if the Cowboys to me said, the Cowboys got him in the second round. He said he's bigger than Biotish, wider, can hold it better. He said he's an excellent character guy. He said one of the guys that we had here, he says he did everything we want, and he's got position flex. That is where I'm That's the kind of player you want. Right. That's what I'm thinking. No, absolutely. If you could go in the second round and go get yourself a starting center who's big, because we've already talked about with with Biotish. Hey, nice player, but boy, you know, you can get on past him. This is what I'm talking, and a high character guy, and I'm saving money because, by the way, when you talk about bringing Tyler back, he won't get paid too. Yeah. Right. What does he want to get paid? That's, and that's, 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 a, that's a million dollar question. What does he want to get paid? Does it shake up your market? Is it something that's comparable and fair? I mean, I'm Tyler Biotis is not going in there pounding the table saying I want to be the highest paid center in the NFL or reset the market with my contract. All right, so I come back. If he is, then I'm knew it. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm right behind you. I, I count on you this. We saw Connor Williams lead go to Dolphins, and Connor Williams has been been a better player at the center position. Yeah, that's true. He's a he's a good player, but I'm not going to pay him. Because I can feel, I, I, if you do, and we, we all, I think we're all in agreement, the Cowboys know how to draft offensive levels. Yes. Mm-hmm. We, we talk about this with running backs all the time. Hey, man, just move on. You can do that with a center. And yeah. we're watching. We, we have seen where rookies have been able to come in, and we have seen now two guys who were former guards for the Cowboys go over to teams and play some center and do just fine. Just that, yeah, the other Connor that Connor, went to yeah, Buffalo. Connor McGovern. McGovern. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He played well, too. He played real That's well. it. So, right. so he's, he's, he's a good player. But as I'm trying to look and pay these other, I mean, you see, Lamb, he's not just trying to get a new contract. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> he's trying, he's trying to, to get at, the. After the year he had. <laughs> right. I mean, well, you, you really don't have an argument for that. Yeah. Right. So he's not just coming in, hey, man, make me the average highest pay. No. Hell no. He's coming in strong. So that's where, as I'm looking to save dollars, <laughs> hey, hey, bro, I, pre- I appreciate you. Good, but I got to go. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that's, that to me is where you have to – that's why I'm looking at a guy like Zach Frazier. Let me go in the draft to do this. I wouldn't be shocked. Just me. <laughs> to see a trade down. I really? Mean, if, if you're sitting at one and you think you've got several players – that you could move – if you pick up a four, because you don't have a four because of the Trey Lance deal. So if you could move down, pick up a three or a four, and and also you know, get get, get two guys in the, in the second round, that could be something to think about as you're trying to plug holes and pay people and fill it. What's the old 80-20 rule? you about to have you know, 80% of the roster – Taken up by just a few dudes, <laughs> so you got to get. I want to know guys. what Zimmer in there talking about. Why? Well, because we, we talking about yep. the picks getting taken on first round, the second round. What is he thinking you, right now? That he is thinking. it free agency that he has some guys that he's looking at, uh, or is it? Hey man, we need to figure this out in the draft because I'm still looking at the same thing we've been looking at. Which one is more important? I know we need to sure up the run game. But that ain't been our problem for the last four years, yeah, <laughs> three years. Yeah, it's yeah. been the opposite side of, hey, man, when teams come in here, they know <laughs> that if they can run the ball on us, that we go- are going to have a hard time beating them. And they have been mm-hmm. able to consistently run the ball on us. So I know we you know, we want the offensive line and all that stuff. And we did take a shot at, at defensive line last year. So I, hopefully Zimmer can get his hands on uh, Mozzie Smith and they can get something figured out. But we, I, like to me, it is – up front on the defense that is the most important. Let, let's get a break here. And, and, and I love what you're saying. I love what you're saying as you're watching some of these mocks because we have a couple folks talking about wide receivers. <laughs> here. So, so, so let, a, let, no, us, a, let us have a conversation no. about where do, we see the need, where do we see the need versus <laughs> fantasy football? We do that. <laughs> Barry Church, Heckman, Harris, yeah. Danny McCray. How many we score? This player's lounge Even brought to you by Toshitos on DallasCowboys.com radio. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. 
Smoothie. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl, handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or any time you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. There is no I in Dallas. There is no I in heart either. No I in Blue Star or in Lone Star for that matter. And there's no I in how about them cowboys? Smirnoff knows there's no I in football. Football is a we thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks, home or away, we rally together, we cry together, and we always rally cry together because there's definitely no I in Cowboys fans. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back to the Players' Lounge. <laughs> Register now for the 2024 Dallas Cowboy Youth Camp presented by Invisalign. That's cold. <laughs> Athletes of all skill levels, ages 6 to 16, are invited to learn from the best this summer at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Football camps are led by former NFL players, and dance camps are taught by current Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Register before May 17th to save $25 or visit DallasCowboys.com slash camps. All right, Heckman Harris, appreciate you. Yeah. Players Lounge brought to you by Tostito. Toes, uh, Barry Church, Danny McCray, the players. I'm going to be Scruggs. Um, so, <coughs> Danny, based on what you were talking about here before, um, the Cowboys, you're looking at them 16th overall in rush D last year. So, middle of the pack when it comes to mm. rush D. Went back and looked at the numbers on the Green Bay game. Mm. Packers, 33 carries, 143 yards, mm. three touchdowns on the ground. Yes, we can talk all day long about other positions, but as I see these mock drafts and Cowboy fans getting all excited, um, guys, this thing is being lost for the Cowboys in the playoffs the last three years because of what's going on in the trenches. Of course. We can talk about Xavier Worthy all day long. We can talk about all these receivers all day long. You can't stop anybody in the playoffs? This, I mean, how have they getting – you've been put out of the playoffs the last three years by two 49er teams and the Packers. They, they ran on you, and you couldn't run on them. It, 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 almost every team that wanted to run on you. Going all yeah. the way back to Denver. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, with fans. We, we, like, fans correct. So, I mean. Three-year it, it, problem. It, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not just the playoffs. This is this is every game we come in here and we say, hey, man, what do the Cowboys need to do <laughs> to be able to win this game convincingly like they should? <laughs> mm. And oh, stop the run, as always. And we come back in here on Monday, and we like, you know what? Nine times out of ten, they, have, they didn't stop the run like we hoped they would. Right. Why do we keep ignoring this catastrophe on defense? I, I, I mean, look, in Dan Quinn, we trusted. ED, <laughs> we trusted. Yeah. Um, but there was a point that we came to every season where it was like, look, our, our run defense was horrible. Last season, going just starting at Arizona game all the way down against the teams that had a fortified run offense, we couldn't compete. Uh, and we saw that. And <clears throat> it reminds me, like, we're all fathers here. And, it, it, you know, if you've ever took your, ch- your child from going from baby food to, to solid foods, it's a transition. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are some mistakes, the, some accidents that happen that as fathers, we will walk right past. Mm-hmm. And let mama handle those. Mm-hmm. This is, no. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is this reminds me of that problem. Oh, I didn't see that. What? What? I, didn't see <laughs> I didn't see that. And we got and, and the problem is going to persist if we don't correct it. And like I've been look, looking at the looking at the combine, I'm sitting there saying like. Why? Why is my? Because I saw Michael Irvin. He was so excited about the the Florida State wide receiver, and I'm like, well, yeah, it's cool. Unless it's, you know, second, third round, something. Like that. Definitely not first round. 
because we have to get a guy. We either a linebacker, uh, a three tech. We have to get that guy that can just solidify us up front. And Newey, I completely agree with you. When you go back to the Green Bay tape and you look, that that was our problem. Nothing, we could not get off the field. And I'm, I'm looking at these linebackers and I'm like, man, I need a good off-ball linebacker like the San Francisco 49ers, one of those, either Warner or Greenlaw, I need an enforcer. Then I thought to myself, I said, damn, I already got him on my team. It's Michael Parsons. But I got to use him. But I got to use him at defensive end. Yeah. And so – how do I go into this saying I need an off-ball linebacker, need something I already have on my team? And then that's Zimmer's thing is how do you use Micah? And and when you're going out here and you're looking at getting another linebacker, we're essentially going to be getting a linebacker that can blitz, that can cover, mm-hmm. uh, that you know, because our, that's what you want. That's what and you it's, need, that's yeah. what you want. You want a guy that can get you at least eight uh blitz, get you at least eight sacks from the linebacker position. I got that in Micah. So I mean, I'm in a situation. With the position flex that I need, uh, as far as the linebacker position, I, I, I need a guy. I need who can put the green dot on. Like I need that guy. Like that guy is usually the difference maker on your on, on your team, and not just because of his talent or whatever. It's because he's the leader out there. A general, Sean mm-hmm. Lee, Sean Lee, yeah. general type of guy. Warner, general type of guy. Hey man, when everything going bad. They looking at this guy <laughs> to get them right or to, uh, to go out there and make a play. That's the type of linebacker that you need. He needs the talent. He needs to be able to cover all that good stuff. He needs to have the instincts to be able to shoot gaps. But you need a general out there on your defense. And until we find one, we're going to be in the same same issues right now. Same issues. Because it is a lot of times during the season where sometimes it just ain't going right for you. <laughs> but you got to have that guy where you can look at him and be like, hey, man, so, hey, so, so what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. A&M got a guy. And Edwin Cooper. Oh, they do. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he he's nice. He, he's a guy. So, so when you talk about the you know, combine numbers, and, and I didn't spend a whole lot of time there and get, get excited about the Underwear Olympics, but you see a, you know, a, a Tavante Sweat <laughs> who's from Olympics. here, you, Edwin Cooper, A&M. I mean, there's some players there, and they've got to figure it out. But if you stay in the first round, in my mind, you, you have to address, and, and I should, yes, we're going to the D-line, but, but the front seven. Yeah. That's what the linebackers come in here. And so free agency is going to hit first. Draft is in April, so free agency hit first. And so that, that'll be interesting of what, what they decide to do. But you've got to go ahead and address this problem. We also at some point in time need to get some kind of update on Mozzie Smith. What, Hope what, he eating somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, because he, he looks slim. He going out mm. there, you know what I'm saying, get you some honey buns, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is. Get you the door <laughs> over right. at Poncho. Hey, get get right. Poncho, raise the flag. <laughs> put, some, put, some breaks, put some breaks in your pocket. Uh, get them a soap of peas. <laughs> 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 put that honey on there. <laughs> Need to get you the endorsement. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, don't do it, Mozzie. Hey, don't do it. That's not the right way to do it, Don't do it, not the right way to do it, That's not the right way to do it. He needs some breaks. <laughs> gotta be at home That's board. hilarious. Don't, don't go. Don't, don't go listen there. to Newey. Because yeah, Newey's gonna be the first place to come back up here on the radio tell us he saw you in there. <laughs> so, mm. Saw him last week. Yeah. <laughs> Walking out like I saw like I saw Lyle Collins. What two sisters? Full. What a, I already ate with bags. <laughs> got the gumbo, dude. Oh, yeah, I got the gumbo. I, I, me too, me too. Oh, uh, they, they've, they've got to address these things. And so uh, for me, right now, I'm I'm looking at the at the defense in the first round, barring whatever we see in free agency, because just for all of our Cowboy listeners, when you do something in free agency, you're normally not going to do that same thing in the draft. You're usually not going to double up there. Mm-hmm. So, but they've got they've got to address it. That's one good thing about Zimmer. We know what Zimmer wants. Zimmer likes to be stout up front, and he likes his linebackers. He likes his linebackers. So, that that's got to be addressed, man. It's it's just it's been too far gone. You didn't try to escape too many times. Can I ask? I, I, I'm really – and the, the thought also as we talk about our deficiencies in the defensive line, the running back position is – so much has changed in the, in the climate of the football where now no one goes into the first round – talking about picking up a running back anymore. Mm-hmm. So uh, second, third, fourth round is where you're looking to pick up a running back. I, I think we have to address that. I, I really to. do. I, I really I feel like coming into the season, or even last season, after Tony Pollard got injured, you saw it, man. Our, our running game was, was pretty much like, you know, dead in the water. There's nothing we could do in San Francisco. And even against Green Bay, we didn't have a chance because we could not run the ball. Uh, versus, I mean, then, obviously, we got too far behind that running, mm-hmm. running the ball was senseless. But we have to address that. I, I agree with you. I think we're all in agreement there. 
The Cowboys have done a good job when you talk about drafting running backs. I mean, t- Tony Farr was taken in the fourth round. Yeah. He did a good job. I mean, you think about where they took Ezekiel Elliott and what he helped do to this franchise. They, they've they made some smart choices in the draft with these running backs. I I trust them to, to go out and get to get someone. I do. And you hear Mike McCarthy tell the beat writers he'd like to have Tony Pollard back. I wouldn't mind Tony Pollard back. <laughs> You need some help around it. Don't ask him to carry the load. But I could see it. They got that one kid out of Notre Dame, good, good football player. You take a kid like that along with Tony Pollard, now you got two guys out here who could do a little something for you. I think that's easy. To me, I think that's easy. How many picks do the Cowboys have in this draft? Any, They're six? You, no. Well, so you gave but they up, don't have the four. Yeah, you gave the up the four. Um, I think you gave up five for Cooks. <laughs> So, was it, but but you've got I, I got to go back and check this. But because we we looking at some me. issues here. <laughs> we, I mean, <laughs> we count. We, we, we love to count. Like, like, hold on. We're talking about offensive line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're talking about defensive line. We're talking about the second level for for linebackers. Yes. And let's not mistake the secondary. Gilly's a free agent, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. The sort so is uh, what Jordan Lewis as well. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of holes that this team needs to fill out. And the cap, we still ain't even looked at the cap situation right now. Which is why I talked about trading down here. Okay, so here, here, they have five picks um, right now. So you got a first round pick, number 24, second round pick, number 58, third round pick at 87. And then you have two seventh round picks. So you do not have a four, five, or six. Right? Oh, goodness. Oh, man. So that's why I'm like, hold on. Okay. And we, and that, that, that's where a trade down is 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 something mm. that you could think think about here, um, out of the first round to try to recoup some more picks to get some some, some other players. <laughs> then legit, we talking about free agency. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, cause you got first, second, third. Yeah, yeah, man, we we sleep about, into the yeah. Yeah. We and, done. and this is CD's fifth year, right? It's going to be his his franchise year. Yeah. And, and, and are, are we sure uh, he going to play on the one year? Yeah, but option. but I, I don't I don't I don't I'm a man. I don't see him coming in to go play with. That's I what see. I'm saying. Like, are we? Nah. So, he, he are we sure paid. he going to play? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good with this. So I, that, that, that's, I don't know. <laughs> that's where I said, you know, paying a Biotish and paying a that's true. A Tyron Smith is really not there. We can't do. I've got you've got to take care of. 88 and four. Those mm. are going to be monster deals. Mm-hmm. Okay? Those are going to be huge contracts. C.D. Lamb is most likely going to be, if not the highest paid, the top three average salary. Mike Evans just got how much? Yeah, yeah he's just got <laughs> he, he averaged 26. 26. 26. He's 30 26. some years old. Yeah. So you've got that, and Ooh. you've got Dak Prescott, and you know we've heard of, if Joe Burrow got 55, Man. and Herbert got 52. So start thinking there. At minimum, your guy is getting 52. Minimum. Minimum. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is a, it's a tough, it's a pickle, but they've been knowing that they had this situation coming sure. for a very long time. Sure. You could have negotiated, redone those deals, and we've waited to the 11th hour. So the, who, do you put the, who do you put the fault on? The elephant in the, the, elephant in the room. Management. The elephant in the room mm-hmm. is Dak and CD's contract. And Dak isn't, I mean, he's gone radio silent, basically. I guess we saw him with the goatee the other day, but uh, it, we hadn't seen Dak. <laughs> we hadn't seen Dak, so we don't know anything for what he's asking for or what's going on with Dak. Different. We know we know CD. We know CD after seeing Mike Evans. Stop he, it, Barry. Stop it. Hey, I thought that was a different person. I ain't going to lie. I thought it was fake. I thought it was an AI thing. I was like, that ain't Dak. You know, you and then those, I had to look at the, uh, <laughs> the thing at the bottom. You know, you see those wax statues on the like a wax Dak Prescott. Nah, that's when you uh, when you on the when the video game and they like create your character and they start off with the uh, <laughs> the, the, play, <laughs> the, nah, the man. Goatee. Don't do my quarterback like that. Goatee nah, I'm not saying he look bad. He that look different. That. When you, yeah. you, you used to seeing Dak a certain way, he looked different. Yeah, I did yeah, not I think that. I, was, I, was, I, I thought it was fake. Yeah, I, I didn't oh, say yeah. That. I'm not saying he looked bad. Oh, okay. like, that, that's not I, my. I'm just it. saying he looked different. That's all. So he's gonna reset the market. He's gonna reset the market. He's gonna be the high one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league for however long. That's coming his way, and you can't. And, and the thing is, I, I guess if you look at it from a negotiation standpoint with, with CD, do they go to the negotiating table with CD like most Fortune 100 companies do with their employees and say, you you aren't what we thought you were and you're going to take it? No, they're going to talk to him 
as far as the top paid guys in the league. So now you're paying not only the lion's share to your quarterback, but also to your wide receiver. And don't look now, you probably have a resetting of the market in all of defense with Michael Parsons being the highest paid defensive player ever when it comes down to his contract. All right, so uh, that means that means somebody got the somebody got. Hey. Thank you, buddy. So Say they goodbye. did start these conversations with CD last year, I assume. I, <laughs> I don't know about that. When one. they when they were listening to them thirteen hundred yard projections, man. <laughs> I, Franchise it's too tag late on. now. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. He said, again, watch, again, watch this. It, 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 it's it, too it, late. <laughs> It's like they did with Tank and Dak. They did it again. A wide receiver franchise tag is basically $22 million. So for, for, for so. the 26 that oh Evan got, God. you know, that that's that. This, this is the market. This is the market. So somewhere along the way, you're going to have to try to save dollars to make these two deals happen. And why haven't you heard from Dak Prescott? It's real simple. When you have all the leverage, you the best thing you can do is say nothing. Give nothing away. Because this man has all the leverage. You got to pay me sixty million either way. Have to. Why would I say one thing to anybody? Mm, I'm just sitting there thinking about all them times when I signed, played on them franchise tags. Oh, he hot. He's not. I mean, yeah. he's not giving an inch. Yeah. He's not giving an I inch. Mean, you don't forget. You don't have to. But uh, playing the devil's advocate. What if the What if the organization is saying, "Fine, I'll pay you. This, we'll pay you the sixty. And then you but, can't. You can't. Because he has a no trade clause. He has a no trade clause. Not, uh, any of that in there, okay. and hold, then you hold, can get get completely out of this deal hold that next thought. year. I will tell you. I'll I'll answer that. Got. It. Got it answered for you next. Barry Church, Heck Mayers, Danny McCray, the LSU National Champion <laughs> Tiger. I'm Bruce Cruz. This plays out by the Tostitos on DallasCowboys.com radio. You must got something good. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hi, I'm Danny McCray, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want a munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at Get Jack Black dot com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip that's get slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip i'm dak prescott quarterback of the dallas cowboys and they snap it to prescott who looks right it's not there he escapes left he'll run for a first down just like football when it comes to crypto it's important to have a team you can trust with blockchain.com i know i'm in good hands since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Back, Back to the Players' Lounge. <laughs> the CONCACAF Na- Nation- <laughs> Na- Nations League finals are coming to AT&T Stadium. Don't miss your chance to watch North America's best soccer teams battle it out in the semifinals on March 21st. Then see who lifts the trophy in the championship on March 24th. Tickets are available now at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Get your CONCACAF on. I need to put those credentials in. Those are some those <laughs> credentials. They want a whole lot of information for CONCACAF. So you're just going to try to show Heckma up like that and, and just say it's smooth? <laughs> I am blessed to work it's all good. Next, it's all good. I work next to the folks at Telemundo. And they all into this. And they've actually taught me. I'm like, okay, what? 
How do I, what is it? What, so you just day? let us mess it up for <laughs> two days. What is you it? Just it's it's the like, CONCACAF. Yeah, no, that's yeah. right. No, no, that's right. That's right. right. World, okay. Cup, World Cup plug? Um, World we, 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 you wait, think he going to get you some? Hey, oh, he hey, might. Hey, hey, it's hey, just hey. me who don't get nothing. Yeah. That's what it is. Just me. Hey, we ain't even the same. Hey, Nui, watch this. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, what do you, hey, no, what do you, I, I, you get a guy? I, I love you though. What, what do you get a guy that <laughs> went on Survivor and won and that kind National of thing? National you know? champion. I can't. Right. Uh, that cake that, that you do. were talking about, you cook. That's what <laughs> you, <laughs> hey guys, have you ever had some of this? <laughs> Since you asked, you, you bring some in. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, get you thought I brought some? <laughs> Heck, man, answer your question, sir. Tell you how it tastes. Exactly. <laughs> tastes taste it all. Hey, we was, we was so dumb. You still walking we around walk, with this? We still walking around right still peeling this way? New Eden, man. I ain't going to forget this, you New York City. Y'all crazy, man. Hey, okay, man, boy. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Dude, you'd be a hell of a wife if you was a woman. Nag, nag, nag. He, he ain't okay, been that cake. You got a little, boy, you keep it scoring like my daughter. Mm -hmm. she, yeah. she did in the seventh inning. But That's right. Three That's games me. Ago. That's me. You want to check the phone? I see. <laughs> but I don't know. I, see. I, don't, I don't deny. <laughs> so Heckma was speaking about Dak Prescott <laughs> and why Dak, if, if they yes. say, if they tell Dak, well, do fine, we'll let you play 59 million. And Dak says, go ahead. You can't improve your football team. The, you, what you want to do is sign into a contract, and then that first year, well, he's making like $2 million because you put all the money into a signing bonus. That's how you work the cap and you make it, and you, and you, and you get to sign other people. So it is in their best interest, and the way they set up the contract, they basically put themselves in the position that they have to get something done with him to improve the football. I think it's imperative that they get the deal done, Nui. I, for, for all of those reasons, if you let him pay, play on, on that and he comes in and you can't improve the team, he looks horrible. He doesn't have any pieces around him, didn't have you know other guys. Uh, you're not able to improve your offensive line. I think all of those things does not bode well. They're tied at the hip in this situation Bingo. if you look at Dak and the organization. Organization. So, but like I said, we hadn't heard anything from Dak because he has all the leverage. He wants his money. The, to me, the Cowboys should definitely make sure that they get that done because you're only a few players away. I feel like you're getting to this mm. level and you're only a few. Come on, guys. Now, look, whoa, listen, whoa, 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 right, whoa. Let me tell you something. If you pay Dak 60, and this is, you pay Dak 60, he go out there and have a year. You in trouble. <laughs> you're going to pay him anyways. Were you going to let him go after that? You was, oh, we paid you 60 because, well, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden he have a year. Now you're going to go out there and pay him 55 the yeah. next year anyways. Yeah, you're going to give it. That's, and, and, and I think in the organization's mind, they believe that we will go as far as Dak, Dak, uh, Dak Prescott is going to take us. So I don't see them looking at next year being a year where you don't have Dak Prescott. So I see them paying the, I, I see them paying the guy. How many players are we away from the NFC Championship game, guys? Oh, on, I mean, did we name me. during the oh, – <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm about to say. I'm about to say. I mean, so that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. That's what I'm saying. A few years – you didn't say 20. Yeah, we Several. up there. Oh, come on, man. Why y'all doing <laughs> this, man? Nine, 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 three, nine, 12, nine, and five. Six, th 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 think about how many guys you had this year. How many guys did you have on the squad this year where we were sitting there saying, okay, we got Cooks, we got Gilmore, we got this, that, 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 that. And then we come out of the season saying, you know, man, we need – Offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, mm -hmm. running back. <laughs> you, you, need, you, need, you need two running backs. Powell's a free agent right now. So you need two dudes. Because right now, the guys you got yeah, coming back, you can't be sold. You're not sold unless you need two running. You need two dudes. Uh, your center, he free agent. Probably going to lose left tackle. Um, at least two linebackers. Interior. <laughs> you, you need slot corner. Lewis, free agent. Mm -hmm. Gilly. So, and, and it's my understanding that every team in the NFL has the same set of issues. You can even go to the Kansas sure. City Chiefs and start going down your fingers and saying what they're losing. I'm telling you right now, with the team that you have, where you got in this season to even being close to winning the NFC, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Don't, don't, don't tell me that we are 20 players away from, from winning the championship. I said, six. I, said, I, said, I, said, I said nine. I was looking about oh, nine yeah. guys. Uh, yeah, I, listen, I don't know how I get that. Yeah, I, but I, you I, need I, at least six. Yeah. For yeah. sure. God, you need not six bridge, guys. Not bridge players. Like a guy to bring in. Because like, that's what you – would you consider Gilly to be 
the the bridge player that you because you were he was a bridge player I believe yeah. okay and and, and uh, for me the thing with Gilly is we're assuming Diggs is going to come back but we don't know how he comes back when does it happen when is he going to feel like he used to be you feel and, a little bit better and with the, the leadership that he bring that Gilly's brought as well I mean there's 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 some issues there right now that I'm looking at and look. I was with Emmett and Troy over the weekend, man. Well, Emmett is hot. He's still mad about this team. <laughs> still hot about this team. He mad at everybody because he mad. I seen him put out something about uh, Florida too, about the DEI. Man, my man, he, he not playing. Um, but the the client, I mean, the, the culture. That's another thing. You bring in some. What about this culture of of dudes who act like they've won something here? We have not seen them come through when they needed to come through, and and I don't even know how many people are pained by what's been happening with these exits. So. I, I just think there 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 are some players away, and then there's a, a culture shift of how many people want to play and just be cowboys or want to actually go out here and win some games and hate losing. There's stuff here, man, because it's been this way. I mean, think about it: Super Bowl Thirty. Mm. Dude, I had hair. <laughs> yeah. A brush. I didn't have children. Right. Right. I mean, this, uh, these dudes were what? Elementary school? You said yeah, you was watching. Seven. You was, was watching seven. Stone Cold. Okay, Stone Cold right. Rock, baby. Man. Right. Think about that. Mm. So, I, I, there's problems here, man. There's seven. These, seven. seven. <laughs> and, and that ain't cool. This, that is not cool at all. The, the whole premise. <laughs> that ain't cool. The premise of three 12 win seasons. If you just go in throughout the league, it, the the regression comes. It, it's hard to have, you know, four of these in a row. It's hard. The league is not made for you to do that. No. And and, and when you when you go back to the, the the success that Kansas City is having, it's because you, you look at a Patrick Mahomes. You yeah. say, look, he is the linchpin of everything. And, and Andy Reid, they have a system that is unbeatable. They figured out a way to get through the regular season, which was the worst regular season that they had, and, and was able to roll through the playoffs. I'm looking at this Cowboys team and just saying, look, there's so many other things that we need to build around. We didn't have the running game that we needed to get through. There's points in the season where we absolutely needed our running game to come through. Secondary-wise, I'm with you. Like, Marquise Bell, to me, as a linebacker, he's going to be the guy that's going to move out to safety. Gotcha. I don't know if we're going to re-sign uh, Curse. He's been – and he even played for Zimmer. Uh, so, we don't know how that's, how that's going to go. I think you have some of the pieces here. But all I'm, I'm making that point to say, as you look around the league and you look at teams like Buffalo, the teams that you think are going to be in contention, they don't have all the pieces and so I don't expect for this to be perfect in the end, that we have a guy at each position, but I don't feel like we are nine players away. Okay. All right, that's this edition of the Players' Lounge with Barry Church, Heckman Harris, Dan McCram, Nui Scruggs, brought to you by Tostitos. Thanks to Chris, Joshy, uh, Jazz, everybody's been part of it. We'll talk to you again next Monday right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?